Guys, when it comes to survival and being prepared, uh, you know, a lot of people have bug out bags. They'll have something that they can grab and take with them. Uh, you know, you may have some supplies around the house and, you know, typically there are supplies around the house for a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about. But one of the things that's really important is to keep everything together. I mean, have a 72 hour kit. This is more of an emergency kit. It could be an SHTF kit. I mean, it's just something where the essentials are together. Here's the one thing about panic. And when something happens and it goes crazy, your chances of survival decrease when you're panicking. You're making rash decisions. You can't find the essential items that you need. And so this is just a great way to have it all together in one place. Now, one of the things, just like my bug out bag, one of the problems over the years has been that I would rob from it. <laughs> I needed something, I would pull it out, especially as a reviewer, a gear reviewer, is I was pulling things out of here to use for different videos or I just needed different items in here and so that's one of the things that you've got to be careful with with your bug out bag number one don't take anything out of it if you can help it go ahead and buy something else to, to replace it and use it on the outside but there are times where a bug out bag is great but if you're having problems around the home or you're on the road and you need to go and you're in your vehicle this is a great way to have these items together and you can take them with you. Even FEMA suggests that you have some kind of 72 hour kit and have it together and have it portable. So in case you do need to leave, you've got everything together. Now, before we get into all the contents, one of the big things is knowledge. Having all the gear is great, but knowing how to use it. Uh, one of the best resources though, to be prepared is Survival Dispatch Insider. Uh, they bring together most of the names that are really world renowned in the survival prepping community and we upload one video there exclusive to the Insider every week. And so check it out, I'll have a link down below in the description. Guys, I base all of my kits on the rule of three, and that's three minutes without air, three hours in harsh conditions, three days without water, or three weeks without food. Medical and self-defense kind of flow in between that. Uh, first thing we're gonna look at though is really your water. Uh, water is really important. You know, if you're already at home, you typically have shelter, even though we're going to take a look at that as well. You need at least a half a gallon of water, of drinking water, every day. Now, most survival experts will say you need a gallon of water per person every day, but half of that is for cleaning and things like that, which you definitely need. So here I'm just showing a representation of three gallons for the three days, and this just kind of covers cleaning and your drinking water but also having filters. And here we just have one of the Berkey sport filters, or, and there's a lot of different types out there. Uh, Katadyne, I mean, you can go with a camping type filter, whatever, but one of the problems with having water available is, is it drinkable? You may have a stream, a pond, a lake. You need to be able to get good, clean water because if you drink that water and you get cryptosporidium or you get some kind of bacteria, uh, you're gonna get really sick if it doesn't kill you. And so just make sure you don't want to be sick in a survival situation. Now, three hours with harsh conditions, and that means you need to stay warm or you need to stay cool. I mean, if you get into extreme conditions, you're going to have a lot of problems. And so one thing is, is having some kind of shelter. Now, if you're in a home or you're in your vehicle, that's okay. Uh, but you still need something to keep you warm, especially if the power's out. And one big thing that I like, of course, are space blankets. And here's a tarp with a space blanket. I mean, having a, a sleeping bag is great as well. Even a tarp that you can wrap up in. But one of the things about a tarp that's really important, and I think it's something you need to have multiple tarps, is let's say you have a, a huge hole in your ceiling. Let's say the roof has caved in partially and you need to use this. And that's one of the things that's kind of a constant theme through this is having some things to do repairs if you need to being able to improvise. As we say, we like to improvise to survive. Now, one thing I like and I keep in all my bags, heavy mill trash bags, and these are contractor bags. They're super thick and, I mean, these things are tough. And there is a bazillion uses for these things. In fact, there was a world famous survivalist that they asked what was one thing that if he could only choose one thing, what would it be? And he said a trash bag, heavy mill trash bag. And so this is such a great keeps you warm, it repels water, you can do repairs, and you know they come in the big box and you can use that for a multitude of things. Of course, having a tent, having wool blankets, things like that, this just kind of represents all those things that's gonna keep you warm, it's gonna give you shelter and keep the elements off of you, including wind. 
Guys, having a good wool blanket, super warm. I mean, this has been used for centuries, wool. And so this is something great. It's a little heavier than your fleece, but this is this will really do the job. And you can get these like military surplus uh, very reasonably. Also, poncho liners. These things are great. It keeps water off and also it keeps you warm. But guys, honestly, there's a ton of different options. This is just to get you thinking. Now, fire is vital uh, for survival and it cooks your food. It gives you warmth. And it, there's just so many things about fire. And so one of the things I do is keep a good fire kit with multiple ways to create fire. Uh, whether it's, you know, your ferrocium rod, like this Exotac fire rod, uh, even this kind of fire rod matches. Here I have even a lighter. Bic lighters are great. Different, I mean, there's so many different type ways to create fire. Uh, I like to keep Vaseline and cotton balls as a good fire tender, fire starter, small little candle. And just multiple, again, multiple ways because, guys, fire is really essential. And it's really been with us since primeval man. And uh, here I have it in one of the seahorse containers. And this thing is waterproof. And it just is just incredible. Now, guys, this is not necessarily in order, but your clothing is also very important. Uh, having some good work boots or some good strong shoes uh, that you can get around in that are going to be very rugged. That's important and some good socks. And I would highly recommend having extra pair of socks, especially wool socks or socks that will wick off moisture. Uh, having pants, shirt, you know, those things that you need to change into. You could end up into a shelter or something like that. And that's one of the elements that this is included is if you need to go and you may spend a couple of days somewhere, this is going to help you. You also need some kind of shirt or a, a jacket to be able to keep you warm, keep water off, things like that, and a rain jacket that will also keep water off. Now, this does repel moisture and water, but having a dedicated rain jacket and possibly even rain pants to pull over. Because if you get cold, you could go into hypothermia. Uh, having a watch cap is really excellent, keeps that head covered, but also just a standard ball cap would work. But this will keep you warm at night, especially. Now, I do have a bandana here, and the one thing about a bandana is, is you can cover your face with smoke, with dust, winds coming up, uh, a lot of different things. And plus, you can use bandanas for a multitude of things. Uh, we even did a video on a number of different uses in survival situations for bandanas. And I keep these around all the time because they're just so useful. You can even make a hobo sack out of this if you don't have a backpack. And a good set of gloves. Gloves are very important, especially if you're working. Of course, it keeps your hands warm. But typically in a survival situation, you're going to be working hard. And so these are just some warm gloves, but having a good pair of work gloves would actually be better and then have these also just to keep your hands warm. And one that flows in and out of the rule of threes is definitely medical. Uh, and one of the things we always keep here, this is one of the AMP3. This is a clinic in a roll. And this thing, and I'm, we're gonna break it open, but this is just excellent. You need a really serious medical kit. Uh, because you're not necessarily going to have access to, you know, emergency services. One thing we definitely take with us all the time, even in all of our vehicles, is a med kit and a trauma kit with, with a cat tourniquet and, you know, compression galls and things like that to keep things going. And this is something that is really handy, easy to use, and we just open it up. Now, I think the tour tourniquets are actually pulled out of here right now, but I have some Israeli bandages, and we have a lot of other just typical medical things as well, whether it's Advil, eye wash, compression galls, all that stuff. And these are just excellent to keep with you no matter what. If you shoot, if you go to the range at all, you definitely need a trauma kit handy. Now this, just to give you an idea, is just really full on. And I mean, it's very well organized. I've got a video on this. You can check it out. I'll have it annotated above. But you've got all, even a Sam splint, you've got all kind of things, all the way up to eye care, to dressings, uh, you know, wound care, tape, tools. I mean, this thing has it all. And you can actually post this thing up and hang it, uh, and that way you can get to everything. And then there's even a small light. And so there's a number of different kits out there, but this to me is one of the best. Plus David at USN ER Doc is a, an emergency room doctor in Portland, Oregon, and he put this together. So you know you got the items that you need. This all leads us to personal hygiene. And of course, toilet paper is a must. Uh, we have some baby wipes, and these things are great. Small toothbrush and a small tube of toothpaste would be good. Some chapstick. This is a little towel 
that uh, actually expands when you put water to it. And then I have some bug spray, especially in the summertime. This is vital. I mean, you can really get sick. You can get a lot of different diseases from mosquitoes. And so this is just a small sampling. Uh, you know, some of the things like shaving cream and razors, you can include that if you're going to a shelter or something. But if you're just out and about, you know, you want to stay with just what is basic. And of course, put this with your trauma kit or your boo-boo kit with all the different things for medical. And, you know, you should be good to go. There are a lot of things you can add to this, but this is just a simple little small, especially with the wipes. That fits so many different roles. And a bar of soap would also be great, except that you got to keep it in some kind of container. But still, that'd be a great addition. Guys, we rely on our cell phones for about everything, but we can't be dependent on these because if the power goes out, if the grid goes down, you may not have cell service. Uh, you do definitely want to have some kind of charger though in case you have a power outage, and that way you can keep your phones charged and other electronic devices. But communication is key even if your phone doesn't work. And here we have just a weather radio. This has shortwave. I mean, it has a lot of different things. There's a light attached. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff. What's really cool about this one is that it does have a solar panel on the back. It does run by batteries and you have a hand crank if all else fails. So there's a lot of options to keep this thing running. So I really like to have this. You know the weather. You also can get other channels to find out things that are going on, especially on shortwave. And then just some personal communication devices is like these two-way radios. Now, having a ham radio would be optimal, but you need to get your ham license. Now, in an emergency situation, you don't have to have a license if you need it for an emergency. And we do have ham radios, but this, these are just two-way radios. We have a charger, and of course, you need to make sure that this stuff is charged if there's some situations happening around you. And that includes all of this. But this is great to be able to communicate with other people in your party or if you can communicate with people around in a short area. It doesn't replace the phone, but it sure does keep you from being totally blind. Or should I say deaf? <laughs> Guys, then we have light. And of course, you know, having a flashlight is critical in a grid down situation. You need to be able to see. Uh, this one is just a, a stream light. It takes uh, CR123 batteries, which are very long lasting. You can store them for a long time. And then we have one of the Seeker 2 O lights. And this is great because it's rechargeable. But again, if you don't have power and you don't have a battery bank, you know, you're gonna run into trouble. And this is a double A flashlight, which you can keep a lot of the double A batteries. Having batteries on hand are important. Also a small lantern like this one. And you know, you'll be surprised at how much you could use this lantern because it just gives you light and it's ambient light and uh, it is rechargeable. But again, guys, after a while, this goes down and you can get lanterns and different things like that, just standard fuel lanterns but having also candles. And candles, you can get them cheap, you can get a lot of them. And uh, here, uh, these are some that we've had in storage for a little while, different styles. There's a lot of different ones. I would definitely look more towards something that's a little bit larger to be able to use, but having your candles in one spot where you know where to get them. When the power goes down, you've got candles, you've got flashlights, you have lanterns, and then you can kind of get by. Now you may have to shut off utilities. And like for here, we, this is what we shut off our water with. It's a large wrench and we keep a couple of these around. Uh, having a crowbar, this really good and sturdy, hammers, things like that. Uh, but one thing we do have are silcock or cross tools. And these are great to shut off different type uh, fixtures. And this is what a lot of people carry when they're out trying to turn off different things. And this gives you a multi multitude of different choices. And this is great, especially for urban survival. Another thing is, is a good shovel, compact shovel. This is just one I have around. I do have a couple of US military shovels that I typically keep in my vehicle. And that way I can keep them compact, I can open them up, and if I need to use a shovel or a saw or things like that, I have it available. And of course, speaking of tools, having a really good fixed blade knife uh, can go a long way, not only in taking care of a lot of different things, because a knife is your number one survival tool. It's something you can use not only just for standard survival, but also for self-defense, especially like this Glock knife. I mean, these things are excellent. It even has a sawtooth on the back. And so this is something, uh, again, have some sort of knife. And of course, obviously you'll have your EDC with you with a small pocket knife, things like that. But a good fixed blade knife is irreplaceable. 
And guys, having extension cords, there are so many times where we're looking for extension cords in regular situations. In a survival situation, being able to get from some outlet that may work, or even a generator or things like that, this would be critical to have. It can get you where you need to. So having some extension cords, plus you can use these extension cords as cordage if you need to. And speaking of cordage, always have some paracord and here this little spool tool. These things are great to keep it organized. But having a good bunch of paracord is great. And then here I have some just wire. And this is actually issued to the US military and it's just got different type wire on here, yellow and green and it's on this spool. And you can a lot of times get this at surplus stores or gun shows. And then duct tape. I mean, everybody needs duct tape around. And this is Gorilla Tape, but any kind of duct tape, you can do a lot of different repairs and you can do things with duct tape, obviously we all know. So these things are more toward repair and fixing things and even being able to put up a tarp if you need to for shelter. Now guys, one thing that I saved for last is food, because honestly, you can live three weeks without food. Doesn't mean you can't, you need food to keep up your energy. It's really important, but it's really one of those things that it needs, the priority of food needs to kind of come down a little bit on the list. You gotta have food to survive though. Three weeks without food, and guys, you really get sick way before then. So here we have, you know, the basic MREs. I mean, people always keep MREs around a lot of times in survival situations. I mean, the US military has used these forever and they're just complete. They've got a lot of stuff in here, a lot of variety. And so this is a meal ready to eat. There is a small little pouch in there where you can heat the food up just by adding water. And so these things are great to have. One of the top things that I would recommend but also lifeboat food. And this is great uh, to have on hand because it lasts for five years. You can pack it away. It's vacuum sealed. Uh, I believe this is 3,600 calories. And so you, you have a lot of potential with this, just these bars. And honestly, guys, they taste great. They taste like graham crackers almost. I mean, they're just really good. And it really keeps you from getting thirsty, which is also a, a big plus. And then here's just another type uh, this is 1,200 calories. But you can see it's a small package. You can throw this in a pack easy enough. And if you need to eat, you've got food. And of course, then they have, you know, a little bit better stuff like the Mountain House. And then here's Backpacker's Pantry. And so this just gives you some different options to be able to hold on to. Now, one thing about this is, and especially with this kind of stuff, with the dehydrated, is that you do need to be able to fix it. You need to cook it. You're going to need a pot things like that. So if you're on the road, you need a pot. If you're gonna go, it'd be great to have a small little saucepan and you're gonna need some way to heat it. But that comes with your fire kit, building a fire, and if you need to, you can boil the water that way. Again, guys, improvise to survive. And guys, one thing that I always keep in my kits, and this is to keep my survival sanity, <laughs> are play cards. I mean, this is something that you can use and you can entertain each other and just get it out and play. Uh, other little games, especially if you have kids, you wanna really consider this as well. Uh, but this just kinda helps morale because a lot of times you're just sitting around. Guys, honestly, there's no way to know everything you're going to need. And so down in the comments below, if there's some things that I've missed or some items that you found useful in an emergency situation, make sure you put it down in the comments below. It really helps to get people together and it helps them to make sure they fill all those holes. Uh, guys, you know, when it comes down to it and you need an essential item, sure is great to know that you've got it in one location. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.